Hi, this is Mosiah K. Rubin, Mike Hill, and Curtis Lewis presenting on UML Communication Diagram. So what is a, a UML Communication Diagram? A UML Communication Diagram is a kind of UML Interaction Diagram which shows interactions between objects and or parts using sequenced messages in a freeform arrangement. Formerly called as a collaboration diagram, it shows similar information to sequence diagrams, but its primary focus is on object relationships. On communication diagrams, objects are shown with association connectors between them. Messages are added to the associations and show as short arrows pointing in the direction of the message flow. The sequence of messages is shown through a numbering scheme. So some parts of the UML communication diagram uh, is a frame, a lifeline, and a message. A frame encloses a communication diagram with the name in the upper left. So the upper left describes what the diagram is about. A lifeline represents an individual participant in the interaction, shown as a rectangle. A message is shown as a line with a sequence expression and an arrow above the line. The arrow, like I said before, uh, indicates the direction of the communication and the sequence Expression is a dot separated list of sequence terms executed in a sequential order. More will be explained by Mike and the demo slide and will make better sense there. So here's a simple example of a UML communication diagram involving an online bookshop. So the, the pieces of this diagram, as we talked about in the last slide, are you have the frame overall which with this information up in the upper left corner where you say sort of what the application is that, that this is for. And then we have these things called lifelines which are in the boxes. And we have messages which are these functions showing how these different lifelines communicate with each other. And so over by the, the little guy on the left here, we can find these two sort of parent messages. We have finding books and we have checking out. And the little asterisk before the find books means that we're going to do it multiple times before we check out. And the ordering is one and then two before them. And so for finding books, we can just sort of follow the, the sub process for one. So it's going to go 1.1, then 1.2, then 1.3. So 1.1 is heading up to inventory. So first we search for a book in the inventory of books. Then, um, this is our first example of something brackets. And so the brackets after that, that's like a conditional statement. So if that is true, then we do this step or we send this message. If not, we just skip it. And so, so as we said, first we search for books and then 1.2, if we find a book that we're interested in, we're going to view that book. And then 1.3 is if we decide to buy that book, we're going to add it to our cart. And so that 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 is a process that we're going to repeat multiple times. And like I said, we know it's an iteration because of the asterisk before find books. And then once we found all of our books, we are and we've added them all to our cart, we're going to check out. And so to check out, we start with 2.1. Um, the system's going to find out what books we've put in our shopping cart. And then 2.2, if there are books in our shopping cart, if we decide to buy anything, then we're going to make an order and the user is going to be required to, to pay and buy his books. And then after he's bought his books, the system is going to go up to 2.3 once the order is complete and update the inventory so that other customers can't buy those books that they just sold to this individual. So with a UML communication diagram, there are some pros and cons that come with using it and it can help inform on when you want to use this type of diagram.
So the first main pro is that it clearly displays the messages sent between objects. This can show, as it's in the name, the communication, and it will show you how the objects communicate with each other. Um, and it shows this in a visual way, which is the next major pro, is a lot of times it's a lot easier to understand how a system works or um, some classes relate to each other if you can see it visually. And the communication diagram really allows you to visualize and see that communication that is passed between those two objects. Um, the main cons for it though is it can be difficult to see the sequencing of messages, the ordering, using only the numbering scheme provided by this method. So it takes a little bit of, I guess, detective work to figure out how you want, how the sequence of messages are being relayed using this method. So that's the real main con, the real downside. The next one is it can get complex very quickly. Some of the symbols and names are a little bit unintuitive for um, the UML communication diagram. Uh, you can have to memorize and understand what each symbol means to really fully comprehend the UML that you're looking at. So that can be a major con. However, I don't believe that these outweigh the pros. I think that by using this UML communication diagram in conjunction with other UML diagrams, you can really understand how the software you're designing, how the objects that you are creating are interacting with each other. And it's super helpful that you can write that down. So that, that's the major pro. You can write that down, draw it, and then show everyone visually, this is how it's going to work. So I think that's the main pro. You can take that abstract coding idea and put it in a visual representation of it. So those are the pros and cons of the UML um, communication diagram. So some recommendations for creating a UML communication diagram are if you don't know where to start, start with a use case. Think like what is a use case that my user is going to be going through and what parts of the system are going to interact with each other and in what order for that use case. And so sort of list out the parts of the system, make each of those a lifeline and then connect the ones that will be messaging to each other. And then the rest should sort of just fill itself in as you write these messages and just use numbers to determine their order. And so if you don't know where to start, just begin with the use case. Um, for your names, for messages, lifelines, and guards, um, make sure to use descriptive names, just like good variable names, as, as we do in programming. So that way, by looking at the diagram, it's really clear what's going on and you don't have to remember anything. And then lastly, don't be overwhelmed by the vast amount of syntax related to these diagrams. Most programs will only require you to understand the labeling process, like the numbers, um, conditionals, and iterations.